Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Queen & Company recently released two new sentiment stacker sets. I'm going to show you the Friends Forever. So the kit includes two full 24 sheet paper pads. The first paper pad is all pattern paper. There are 24 sheets of double sided paper, four sheets of each of the six designs. So these are beautiful, bright colors. There's lots of florals, there's stripes, polka dots. I love this heart paper. There's a little bit of some chevron paper. So there's just a repeat of the others. And then the other paper pad has just solids. So it has the matching colors. It'll go with that pattern paper. And I don't know if you can tell on video, but each side of the paper is a different shade. So there's the two shades of red, two shades of green. Now this isn't cardstock. It's the same paper and weight as pattern paper. It's just a solid color. Also included in the kit are three word dies. There's smile, friend, and lucky. And it also includes the outline die for each of the words. And I really like that these are not hooked together so you don't have to cut them apart. It's never fun to have to cut those dies apart. And then there's a small sentiment stamp set included and these are great to mix and match with those word dies. So that is everything that is included in the Friends Forever sentiment stacker set. And I will provide a link in the description box if you are interested in purchasing it. So let's go ahead and get started with my cards. Card number one, I'm using a sketch from OWH. This is number 116. Just to save on time, I've already gone ahead and cut out all of the pieces. And I do like to layer my pattern paper with some solid cardstock. So sometimes I'm using the matte stack solids and then other times I'm bringing in solid cardstock from my stash. I selected a tone on tone red polka dot paper for the background and then I have this pretty floral paper for that larger rectangle piece. I'm adding in some of this stripe paper for that wider strip that goes across the card and then also added a little border. This is using one of Queen and Company's basic border dies. It has this fun wavy look to it. Before adhering that striped paper down, I did put a scrap of cardstock on the outside edge, just where it's going off of that floral paper. I like to keep all of the pieces on my card nice and even. For the circle element on my card, I used one of Queen & Company's foundation dies and cut out this scallop circle die cut. I used some of the matte stack yellow paper, so you can see it, there's two different shades. And then I'm using just that scrap of cardstock on the upper half of that circle just to keep it nice and level with that striped paper below. For the sentiment, I'm going to add the word smile. And I cut out that outline piece using some of Queenie Company's rainbow glitter foam. And then I'll be adding one of the sentiment stamps. I just want to make sure I get it in the right place. And I'm going to stamp it before I adhere that smile word down because it's going to add a little bit of dimension and it's harder to stamp around that dimension. I used my mini Misty just to make sure I got the placement correct. Queen & Company's glitter foam is self-adhesive so you just have to remove the backing and then you can adhere it straight onto your card. For the word smile, I use some of Queen & Company's neutral foam. So this is just a solid white to cut out the word. And on a couple of the words, so on smile and friends, don't forget to get the dot for the eye. So it is pretty tiny. But I was able to pull it out and adhere it right onto the foam. And now to embellish my card, I'm using some of the fun flowers. So these are a solid plastic and they're in really pretty bright colors. I'm using the red and also the white. There's three different sizes for this pack. And I felt like that upper right hand corner needed just a little something. So I cut out two small banners, used one of Queen Company's foundation die sets and just cut them down. So I have one in a solid red and then the other in blue. And I'm just gonna overlap the blue one slightly. And I did put that scrap of cardstock on that upper portion, just where it's going off of that flower paper. And I'll pull in some of Queenie Company's bling. I have some of their epoxy dots and then also some of their new ice flowers. 
They currently sell four different styles of the epoxy dots. So I'm using the polka dot and then also the plain. Their bling is all self-adhesive, so they're really easy to use. They sell a huge variety. The plastic flowers don't have adhesive, however. I did just put some glue dots on the back to adhere them to my card. So I'm just trying to figure out which ones to use and placement, and there is my finished card. I just love the bright and vivid colors in this paper collection. So now moving on to card number two, I'm using a sketch from Mojo Monday. This is number 533. If you are interested in any of the sketches I use, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post, and that link is provided in the description box below. Instead of just having this yellow chevron paper going across the card, I wanted to add a little more color. So I cut about a fourth of an inch strip of that rainbow paper and just put it underneath that yellow chevron paper and adhered it to the card using some of Queen & Company's eighth of an inch red line tape. I could have also used some liquid adhesive, but my ATG is a little too wide for that thin piece. For the background paper, I have some tone-on-tone -tone floral paper. And then for this strip going up and down, this other floral paper, I decided to extend it. So on the sketch, the measurements have it at three and a half inches long, but I cut it at four inches, just because I wanted a little more of that floral paper to show. Before I'm adhering this yellow paper strip that goes across the card, I put some scrap cardstock on that right-hand side and also just a thin piece on the left-hand side just keeping everything nice and level. I did round the corners. I think it adds a little bit of softness to the card. And I also rounded the corners on that card base. For this rectangle piece, I used one of Queen & Company's foundation dies, this scalloped rectangle. And I did add a piece of cardstock to the back side. This scalloped rectangle is cut out using some of the matte stack paper, so it is thinner since it's more of a pattern paper, and I wanted to add a little bit of stability, so that's why I added that larger rectangle to the back, and then also a scrap of cardstock in that upper right-hand corner. So on this card, I'm using the word lucky, and I have this cut out using some of the gray foam. This is just the solid. I pulled out my mini Misty again to stamp the sentiment, and this is how did I get so lucky. I'm just going to use some blue ink, and I only had to stamp it once. I got a really solid impression that first time. I'll adhere the outline of the word lucky. Just, I just pulled off the backing, and then for the word lucky, I cut this out using some of the yellow glitter foam. To adhere the word, I usually start on the left-hand side and just slowly work on one letter at a time, trying to get it nice and centered in that outline. And then I decided to stamp the rest of the sentiment on the inside of the card. So the full sentiment will be, how did I get so lucky? And then on the inside, it has to have you in my life. So I thought that was really sweet. I cut out a few of the flowers. This is using one of Queen & Company's foundation dies. They have three different flowers. And I'm layering up just the larger one. And I cut these out just using some solid cardstock and then also some of the solid matte stack paper. And I'm just popping those up using some thin foam squares. And then to finish up the card, I'm using an assortment of Queen & Company bling. I have some ice flowers to put in the center of the die cut flowers and also some more of the epoxy dots, this time in the horizontal stripes and solids. And then I also pulled in some of the jelly gems. So I'm a little indecisive where I want to put some of the bling. So I did put some in that lower right hand corner. I didn't like how it looked. I try not to press any of the bling down firmly until I'm positive where I want them. And then I end up putting a few of the jelly gems underneath that stripe paper. I just put three of them in the center of the flowers since it was really easy to line them up. So there is my finished card, and this is card number two. Now moving on to card number three. The sketch is by OWH. It's number 258. I have an assortment of pattern papers. 
I was looking for a sketch that would really work nicely with these large word dies. So I thought that rectangle piece on this sketch would work perfectly for the sentiment along with that word die. For the background, I used some striped paper, cut this out using a scalloped rectangle die, and I'm just layering this on some blue cardstock. I did put some liquid adhesive along that outside edge. I've just noticed that sometimes it pulls up just slightly, so some liquid adhesive will make sure it stays down. I used some floral paper with the gray in the background for that main rectangle piece on the card. And then for this small rectangle where the sentiment will be, I'm using some of the solids using the light yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment first. And then I'm using the word friend. So the full sentiment will be friend, I'm here for you always. I just layer that on some yellow cardstock. And then before I adhere that to the card, I'm using three different papers for this assortment of banners. I have one in the pattern paper, one in some of that blue cardstock for that background, and then also that lighter blue is from the solid matte stack. I just adhered those down first and then trimmed off just the upper portion so I wasn't adding any extra lump underneath this yellow piece and then just adhere it to my card. And I will be adding some of Queen & Company's Trio trims in the red and white. To put it on the upper area of the card. I want to make sure it's not going to overlap any of the sentiment, so I did put the foam outline word down first, and then I can wrap that twine around the card twice. Just adhere it to the back using some red line tape just to make sure it's not going to move. And I'll also put another piece of red line tape on the very top portion just so it doesn't pull away from the card base. So I'll put ATG on the back add this to a card base and for all of these cards I am leaving just that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. I think it looks nice with the colors in this paper pad. And then for the bow I just took another piece of the twine, slipped it underneath the two that are already on the card and then I could tie my bow. For the word friend I cut this out using the red glitter. Just remove the backing on that foam and just adhere it fairly centered onto that outline, and then of course the dot for the eye. Then I cut out some more of the die cut flowers. This is from one of Queen & Company's foundation die sets. I have the red in two different shades, just layered those, and then also one in blue. And I'm just gonna pop these up using some thin foam squares. And now I'll bring in some of the bling. So I love these new ice flowers, they're so pretty, and they look really nice in the center of the die cut flowers. I'm also using some of the iridescent bubbles in blue and some of the red jelly gems. So as always, trying to figure out where I want to place the bling, and I do change my mind several times. But once I get all of those in place, there is my finished card, and I love how this one turned out. That red glitter is so vivid, it's very pretty. So moving on to my final card. This is a sketch from OWH. It's number 192. I will be including five different pattern papers on this card, but since I'm mixing up some of the tone on tone patterns with the busier patterns, it's not going to look overwhelming. And I'm also layering everything with either some solid cardstock or some specialty cardstock. So you can see that background piece is this beautiful green mirror cardstock. The mirror paper is from Tonic Studios. It has been sold out for a while, but I will include a link in the description box, so hopefully it'll be back in stock soon. For most of the pattern paper pieces, I'm adding some matted layers, and I do add an extra eighth of an inch to the measurements that are listed on the sketch for those cardstock layers. Now for this red strip that goes across the card, there is that gap between the heart paper and the stripe paper. And just keeping everything level, I just put some scrap cardstock in that area just to keep it all nice and even. So I'm going to go ahead and put my card front onto a card base before I start working on the sentiment. For the background paper on the sentiment box, I'm using some gray tone-on-tone -tone paper with the houndstooth design. Layered that in the green cardstock. 
I'm using some more scrap cardstock, just putting it on that upper area and lower area of that gray paper since it's going over that red polka dot paper. And then I always lay it down just to see if I need to add a second layer. I felt like I needed just another little strip on that upper portion. I'll put some ATG on the back, adhere it to my card. And it's all hidden, so nobody's ever going to see that I added all those extra pieces. Now for the sentiment, instead of using Queenie Company's glitter foam, I'm going to use their foil. So first I'm taking the outline dies just laying them against some white cardstock, and then I'll be using some of their Gloober sheets. This is a six by six sheet of adhesive. So I'm just gonna trim out a piece to match that white cardstock. So the Gloober sheet has adhesive on both sides. So it's like a large red line tape. One side has a paper backing and the other side has a clear backing. So first I'm removing the paper backing since that's the easiest side to remove. So even that, sometimes I have to work on it just a little bit. And now I'm just gonna put that right onto this white cardstock. So now I'll bring out the foil. So this is this beautiful sparkly yellow foil. And one side it has the color and then the other has a very matte finish. So you're gonna want to put the matte finish down. You're gonna have the sparkle side up. To remove the clear backing on that gloober sheet, the easiest way to do that is to take a piece of scotch tape, just rub it on one edge, and then lift up, and that clear backing will peel right off. Super simple. And then for the foil, so you're just gonna put that matte side down, and the foil is so easy to use, you don't need to heat set it, it adheres to anything sticky. So I'm just taking that foil, laying it right on top of that sticky side of the gloober, rubbing it real gently, you don't wanna scratch it. And if there's any areas that get missed, you can just take some of the unused foil and press it onto those spots. So now I'll take the word outline die, run it through my die cut machine, and there are those beautiful foiled outline pieces. Lots of pretty shine. So for this card, I'm using two of the words. I'm not gonna use any of the stamps. So it's gonna be Smile Friend. I'm going to adhere these down onto that gray paper using some liquid adhesive. And I'm using Quinny Company's Sheer Glue. And it's a great glue, but it wasn't drying really fast. So I did have to press it down just a little bit longer. And I did just bring out an acrylic block just to add a little extra weight. And I missed a part of the area on the F on friend. So after I let that dry for a little bit, it was just fine. And I cut out both of the words using some white pearlescent cardstock. Now these are pretty skinny, so I'm just gonna use my tweezers to hold them and put some liquid adhesive on the back. And I did decide to use some art glitter glue. It dries just a little bit faster than the sheer glue. I also like the really fine metal tips that I have on my glitter glue. So making sure not to miss the dot on the eye. And I'm using an embellishment wand to pick up that tiny piece. So now I'll work on the word friend. Do the same thing, holding those pieces with my tweezers. And the glue adheres really nicely to the top of the foil. This doesn't move around at all. After I get the rest of the word glued down, I can just add that last dot to the eye. And now I can add some embellishments. I used one of the foundation die sets for these hearts. I have one cut out in red and then the other in blue. And I'm just gonna overlap them, putting them in that upper right-hand corner. I adhere the red one straight down using some liquid adhesive, but I'm gonna pop up the blue. And I am using just one piece of foam dimension that's thicker than the other two for that right hand side since it's going off of the other layers. I'm just trying to keep it all nice and even. And then I pulled out some of Queen & Company's new buttons. I have two different styles. Put those in the lower left hand corner. Then I'm tying a bow just using some of the yellow trio trims. This really pretty color that has some iridescent threading throughout it. I'm just gonna put a glue dot on the back and attach this in the center of the blue heart. 
And now I'll pull out some more bling. So this time I have some of the green frosties, the polka dot, blue epoxy dots, and then also some more of the red jelly gems. As always, I'm just figuring out placement, changing my mind. So I do pull these up quite a bit. And then even after I finish recording making this card, I end up adding one more of the polka dot epoxy dots to the blue heart. So there is my finished card and you'll see that little epoxy dot on the still photo. So here's just a quick recap of the four cards I made using Queen and Company's Friends Forever Sentiment Stacker Set. I do have a link provided in the description box if you are interested in checking out this kit or any of the other product that I used. I always enjoy using Queen and Company's kits, whether they are sentiment stacker or shaker kits. Their products are so fun and easy to use. At the end of this video, I'll share links to a few other Queen and Company kit videos I've done in the past. Be sure to let me know which card was your favorite this time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.